the U.S. I would maintain that the United States is a great power in relative decline. Relative decline. It is not in absolute decline, but it certainly is in relative decline. Now look at this. This deals with economic change from 1988 to 2013. And what do you see here? The U.S. in 1988 controlled 25.4 percent of the total global GDP. It sank to 23 percent in 2003. Last year it was 19.3 percent. Who's taking it? China was only 3.8 percent in 1988. Now 2003, 8.8, and then 15.4, and rising quickly. Japan, similar declines and so on. The point is that the United States, in terms of GDP, and this is PPP, people purchasing power, the United States has a smaller control, a smaller portion of the global economy than it did before. But it's a, it's a relative change. In 1945, the United States was unparalleled in its power. Into the 1970s, it grew very, very rapidly. Then, as we pointed out, changes began to occur, and those occurred everywhere with the resurgence of Europe and then eventually the incredible rise of, of China. So there's a big change. How does the United States see itself today? You know, it's very easy for us sometimes, who are Yankees, to say, here's how China sees things, as if we knew it. Uh, but talking about our own country is more difficult, it turns out. It's more difficult because we're too close to it. But I think we understand how the, what the United States role is, in, according to its lights, in the international sphere. The United States sees itself through the prism of liberal internationalism, and I would say this carefully, presumed universal laws that apply equally to everybody. But that's a presumption on the part of the United States. So the United States believes in the rule of law, believes in freedom of the seas, believes in lots of economic interdependence, interdependence, and in some version of democracy. If you run back to colonial times in the United States, there are all these images. The United States is a city on a hill, been blessed by God to create the new Israel in North America. And con consequently, the United States had the right to kill most of the Indians and expand from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific. And then to take a look out at the Pacific and say, hmm, what else is there? And so in the 1890s, they began to look out very carefully at expansion into places like China, the Philippines, and so on. Part of the image of Americans that they hold of themselves is that we are God's chosen people. We live in the new Israel. We are a beacon to the rest of the world. It's all mythological, isn't it? It's, it's myth. But is it any more myth than humiliation history? Probably not. They both are mythological. Essentially, though, the United States sees itself as a benign, democratic, albeit hegemonic power, uh, which is trying to secure world peace. So Americans say, why do we have people disagreeing with us? We are good guys. And we're trying to do good things. But this is the problem with the mythic interpretation of the United States. So what is the United States doing right now in response to the apparent rise of China and the assertiveness of China in the South and East China Seas? It's very clear what the Obama pivot intends, and that is that by the year 2020, 60% of all American military assets will be stationed in Asia and the Pacific. Right now, it's 50%. Well, when you look at the size of the American military, that's a very, very significant repositioning. So there's no evidence that the United States is giving up on its position in Asia. Uh, Vietnam and Japan, particularly, are welcoming now the American military presence in a much more vociferous way than they did for a long time. The same thing is true of the Philippines. Diplomatic initiatives are all over the place with the United States working in Southeast Asia to build these relationships and to firm them up. 
Economically, the United States is pushing the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which excludes China. Absurd. How can you exclude the United States' chief <laughs> trading partner? How can you exclude the world's second largest economy? You have to ask China in to a Trans-Pacific Partnership. That's very difficult for the United States. <clears throat> 